I received an email to photograph an event the other day, but there was a catch, and I'll share what that catch was in a moment. But you know, I've been receiving a lot of emails about event photography and how to price event photography. There are a few ways to do it. Now, a lot of you know that I really like per image pricing, but that is not always the best way to go when it comes to events. Now, that doesn't mean you can't create a hybrid between the two systems. Let's kind of break this down. So have you ever tried per image pricing for event photography? I have and it's worked okay, but I wanna hear about you. Have you tried it, yes or no? Put that in the comments. First by now, and if you have not, you should understand how much it costs you to do business. So definitely check out the cost of doing business video. But once you understand that and you know how much you need to charge per day or per hour or even per second. You can really break it down that far depending on the type of photography you do. But once in a while you may want to consider using a per image system. But once you understand your basic rates, you have a few things you need to consider. Such as what if they only need you one hour? The fact is, you're probably going to have some pre-production and post-production time. So you have to make sure you are offering a fee that is going to cover your pre- and post-production as well as the time to get to the assignment if you're going on location and all the other elements such as following up with the client and even estimating. You need to account for all of your time. So there really is no such thing as a one hour assignment. You need to think about all of the elements and sometimes it doesn't make sense to tell people that look for that one hour this is your hourly rate. You might have to break some of those other elements out such as a post production fee or a editing fee. There are a number of ways again you can approach this but it all depends on the type of work that you do. I often present a higher rate for the first hour. For example, if your hourly rate is $250, you might want to make the first hour $375. That way, you are always covered for that first hour, any additional expenses, and maybe you don't have to add in the travel costs if it's in your local area or any minor pre-production costs. And then from there, you can say, from the second hour on, it's $250, or whatever your cost may be. Maybe it's $500 an hour, maybe it's $150 an hour. It depends on your location and, of course, your experience and your costs and all that that you incorporate into your cost of doing business and the fees that you present to the client. Now, you may have caught that I mentioned experience in that last list, and quite honestly, I don't think experience is a high priority when trying to figure out what your prices should be. If you are a great photographer, you should be paid great photographer rates. Now, your brand does play a role. In other words, your reputation. Do a lot of people demand your work and your time? Well, if that is the case, then you can certainly increase your rates. But if you have a lot of experience doing a specific type of job that maybe other photographers are not doing or don't have expertise or experience in, well, then you can apply that expertise or that experience to your price. So sometimes experience plays a role, but it doesn't necessarily mean how long you've been in the photography business. The thing is, when it comes to events, you are trapped. I like per image pricing because, well, I'm rewarded for my good work. I'm rewarded for my efficiency. But when it comes to an event, you really are not rewarded for your efficiency. Actually, the more photographs you take, the more post-production you have later. So you want to make sure that you are properly compensated for the time you're at the location, as well as, again, as I mentioned before, the time after pre and post-production. So I generally will offer an hourly or a day rate for events. But any other type of photography, such as what I'm going to talk about in a few moments, I will definitely say per image pricing, such as product or food photography. And you need to make note that sometimes people try to sneak those types of photography into an event. Don't fall for it. When you're photographing an event, you're usually doing documentary style photography or photojournalism style photography, capturing the moments, candids. But once in a while, people want some posed photographs. Now, a quick group shot of people getting together, that's fine, but sometimes they ask you to bring a background or set up a scene where you can take more formal photographs. This is common at corporate events. And they may want you to create a set so you can take portraits at their 
corporate event. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I would line item that out. In other words, I would tell them that you will take their portraits for a specific amount per portrait. Because remember, this is taking you away from the event and maybe you want to have a second photographer to continue to photograph, but if you need to take the time to create these portraits, do the setup, there is no lesser value to those portraits than if they came to your studio or you went to their location to take those formal photographs. If you are to take formal photographs that they're going to use for their advertising, public relations, whatever it may be, and I'm not talking about casual photographs like at the Christmas event, that may be a different pricing structure, but that could still be a per image price or maybe per image per print they receive if you print on location. But whatever it may be, keep an eye out for those moments in which someone's trying to sneak someone in. Whether they're doing it on purpose or not, sometimes there are multiple types of photography that are created at events. And be prepared to let people know my hourly rate for event documentary photojournalism style photography is this amount, but when you want me to set something up and light something special, it's going to be this amount. If you understand that, then you understand how you might approach that email that I received the other day. The email was from a nice person who wanted me to photograph their corporate event and they wanted me to take formal portraits that they could use for public relations down the road. The reason why is because everybody was there and this is a common theme. A lot of times it's not because of the event and they want memories of the event. All the people, the key people, the important people just happen to be at that event and they need that type of photography. So in this situation, again, I gave them an hourly rate and then also a rate for the individual portraits. And they understood why and they understood the situation. Now, you can say, look, I'm going to set time aside an hour to create these more formal portraits for you, but I won't charge you the hourly rate. Now, if they need somebody there, as I mentioned before, you can certainly have a second photographer. So be fair to the client. If you're not photographing the event and you're doing a different type of photography, don't double charge for that time. But there are solutions to every situation. So if somebody wants a picture of their building or interiors or food or products during an event, be sure to line item that out. Hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video recommended for you right here.